Today I'm sitting in a cloth chopper that has an SM10 and a Goliath. They're running 2X here. I am here to calibrate, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to run through the SM10 and some of the settings. So uh, I'm gonna piece this together as best I can and hope you learn something. So here's your SM10. It's on keyed power, which is nice. We can just turn it on. You see when it starts up. Okay, and when we hit run, it says head up, which means it is looking for the header wire and uh, we are not chopping, so we can't do that. Uh, just some basics on actual rate. This one is running uh, 2X, um, so that's the pounds per minute going on. This will read actual rate once you start chopping. Control mode, it is set for forage. Silo King applied, this machine put on a ton and a half of product last year. So we're gonna clear that out uh, later when we calibrate it. <clears throat> the only thing you would look at on this side would be duty cycle. And uh, you should do that. That'll show the percentage of power that the motor is putting towards running at that rate. So it's a good thing to keep an eye on if you're normally running at 30, 40% duty cycle for the guy's normal chopping. If something goes bad, we can use that to just run on duty cycle. It's also a good thing to see how, if your motor's running too hard, if it's running at 90% all the time, it may need grease, there may be something stuck. Um, you may need to change the gears to get out enough product, but uh, duty cycle is a good thing to look at occasionally. So now we're gonna start at the bottom on the left and we're gonna press and hold the cal button to do this till that light comes on, you're gonna to have to have it in the hold position. So target rate, this is where you would set or adjust your target rate to what you want it to be based on how many tons per minute they're chopping. Actual rate is gonna be blank. Control mode, we're on forage. And uh, this is the cal number that is in here based on the last calibration. And uh, we may be changing that when we calibrate it today with a fresh bag of product, but I will run you through that soon. Uh, for chopping, you aren't gonna use this side. Um, I'll get into special calibration in a minute and talk about that. So, if you made any changes, press and hold the cal button to save those changes. Now, we're gonna go into special calibration. To do that, we turn it off, and then we have to hold the cal button down, forgive my ugly hand, and turn it on. Hold the cal button down till that red light comes on, and now we're in special calibration. So in special calibration, this is where you would change the uh, polarity. Right now it is open. If I wanna run this machine open, it's heading check, checking for the header wire. I change it to closed, okay? 0.05, that is the amount that it will change your setting on target rate with these up and down buttons. You can change this to go up a tenth at a time or whatever you want it to be. But it, since they're running concentrate, every time they hit the plus or minus button, it's gonna go up or down 0.05. Uh, that's a number you're not gonna change. Um, then when we get around to this side, duty cycle here is set at 14. That is the minimum um, percentage that the battery, that the motor will run, okay? So on some, we've had a hard time getting them to start up, so we've changed this number higher. But if you change this number higher to let's say 20, to give it a little more kick at the beginning to turn it over, you have to be aware that this will not run below 20% duty cycle, so it won't go any lower than that. So. We recommend uh, 14 as your minimum duty cycle, and then it's set as 90 for your maximum duty cycle. So this machine will not run over 90% of uh, power. Now you can bump this up to 100 if you're struggling to get enough out and you're constantly running high, but I think we should change the gears if we're at that point. So 90%, if we're running this motor at 90% for a long period of time, we need to change something. So. Those are what we have set that at. So 
Now that I changed the polarity to closed, I'm gonna press and hold this cal button to save that. And now when I hit the run button, it no longer says header up. Right now it's saying no auger. So what I'm gonna do on have to do on that is maybe grease this thing and give it a turn or check the chain because it is not turning right now. Okay, this machine, uh, that's probably typical machines that haven't run in a while. It's got some wet grime in the bottom of it. Um, nothing too bad, but that could be causing a problem. Um, I tried to turn the shaft. It does turn, but pretty hard. So uh, I'm going to put some grease in it. Probably going to take the chain off and just turn that shaft easily. Um, you're just going to take a 3 16 wrench on the motor. Just slide that down, pop the chain off, and uh, take some minute, and then you can turn the auger freely and run the motor and then put it back together. We'll get her turning. So a good idea, rather than buggering up the shaft with a vice grips or pipe wrench, get a, a smaller Phillips screwdriver and put it through. And I can tell this one is moving really hard. That should move very freely. So we need to clean her out a little better and give her some grease and then she'll turn. This is also a good time to make sure the magnetic wheel is secure on the shaft and turning with it and that your cherry sensor is about a dime's width away and that that is not loose but mounted securely. And uh, this thing is already starting to turn much easier. Just needs to be broke loose for the season and spun a few times. Now I can do it almost with one finger. It's getting close to what it should be. And then uh, once I get some grease in there, We'll put the chain back on and we'll get it running. Man, grease guns have to be the dirtiest things in the shop. So take some rags uh, or bring your own grease gun. Just a little shot of grease, just till you see it start oozing out, uh, out of the shaft there and you got enough grease in there. So here's another interesting tidbit. I went in there with a screwdriver to clean some of the crap out of the auger and I found a bunch of bag strings wrapped around the auger. That'll slow it down. I went ahead and gave it a second shot of grease and now it's really turning really easily. That's where we want it to go. So now we're gonna put the chain back on. First look at the chain, make sure there's all the links are free. And then it's just as simple as putting it on here. And now that this is turning freely, it'll turn as you slide the motor up. You can always do it one-handed. Slide that motor up, your chain is tight, get your 3 16 hit those four nuts, and you're ready to put the cover on. We're going to go back in the side, in the cab, and run it. Okay, now we're going to see if she runs. Put a new zip tie on there so we can see it spinning, and we're going to hit run. And there we go. It is turning. And our target rate was 0.4. She got right up to 0.4, no problem. And our duty cycle is running 29. So nice and easy, it's putting on what we need. So now we're gonna put some product in there, weigh it out and do a calibration. First, I think we might have to eat some of his pizza Pringles. I'm pretty sure he left them there just for me. Okay, we've got product in the machine and we're ready to calibrate. So how we have to start that is, go up to Silo King Applied to your counter. And if you wanna save that number, <clears throat> you can write it down somewhere, but we need to reset it. So press and hold the reset button until that goes to zero. And now we run it. And it'll count how much is going on. And you can see our actual target, actual duty cycle are all the same. So just sit, relax, watch that counter go up. I suggest running out about two pounds. As I sit and enjoy my stale Pringles, I gotta let you know, 
this machine would not have run this spring. Would not have run when it went to the field. And most guys would just dump it full and then call you that it's not running. And you'd have to dig it out to do this whole process. So. Do it early. We're at 1.5 pounds. Time to move. Another side note. I uh, should shut the door. The duty cycle dropped because I started the machine. So I recommend you have the machine running when you calibrate because it does send an extra couple of volts of power through. Um, I got 1.4 pounds when it said it put out two pounds. So I'm gonna run it again while it's running and see if I get something different this time with the machine running. The duty cycle tells me it's running different. It was 29 to 30, now it's 26 to 27. So we'll see what we get. Sorry, lots of information here. But I put the uh, idle up to half to see if more RPMs would make a difference. My duty cycle is still bopping between 26 and 27. So that did not make our machine run any differently. So it just needs to be idling. Okay, we got a little more out with the engine running. We went from 1.4 pounds to 1.5. Um, now you come back in here. You're still at two pounds, you're on your counter. You press and hold the cal button. Now the light comes on, and that shows you we were at 663.6, okay? Now you tap the cal button, just to tap, and it shows you what you what it said it put on, and the cal is flashing. Now you adjust this up or down to what you actually put in the machine. Sometimes you have to hold this button and play with it a little bit. It doesn't move very easily, but we got to move this down to 1.5. Hold it until it moves. It will move. Sometimes they're finicky. So we put 1.5 in there because that's what we weighed. And now we tap the cal button again and it put a new number in there, 851.1. Interesting, I calibrated this machine last year at 663. So this shows the difference that has to happen, why you need to calibrate these things. Now I'm gonna run it again. We're gonna go back out of cal. We're gonna press and hold this to, to save it. Uh, we're going to reset our counter to zero and then we're going to run it again and see what we get out. Our duty cycle went up a little more so the higher the cal number the faster it's going to turn. So our duty cycle went up from 29 to 31. And voila, we got exactly two pounds on uh, when we calibrated it, so it is all ready to go. Now all we need to do is change the polarity back so that it's ready to run on the header wire. So we turn it off, we hold the cal button down and turn it back on to get in special calibration. Once we're there, we go up to where it says closed we change that to open, we press and hold the cal button, and now if we hit run, it says head up. So they are ready to chop, it is calibrated. Uh, all we gotta do is put the cover on, put the hose back on, and rock and roll. Oh, grab a couple more stale Pringles for the ride home. You're done good. And be sure to check your cup. This one has buildup. They're using concentrate, so that's a little more moisture sensitive. And we got some moisture in there, and we got some buildup. So you're gonna have to take that off the hose, and you're gonna have to chisel that out, make sure there's no buildup in the hose, and then you're good to go.